Hi, I'm Ben Shelley, and in this tutorial, we'll be learning how to export some texture geometry as FBX files from Maya. We'll set this up so we end up with one single file complete with all the texture information inside it. Uh, this is a great way of sending 3D files between different computers as they can be imported from any location and instantly display the textures even if Maya can't find the original project directory. So when I think I have my model ready, I'll just do some uh, pre-flight checks to ensure that our model is clean and ready for export. So first of all, I'll go ahead and uh, select my mesh or my group and go ahead and delete history. You should have a shelf set up with your center pivot, delete history, freeze transformations and reset transformations. But just in case you don't, we'll just go to edit, delete all by type history and then go to modify center pivot. Once you've done that, we can move our geometry uh, to the middle of the grid. So uh, hopefully you can find the grid in your scene and hopefully your geometry is somewhere near it. So I'll just move it over to the grid. If we go to our top view and if we press W then hold down X as we move the object, uh, we just need to make sure we get the pivot that has been centered to the model and we need to get that pivot to the middle of the grid exactly. So hold down X and just move it over to the middle of the grid and just zoom in and obviously that should be just fine. In 3D space though your geometry might be somewhere through the floor or something at this point so if we just go to our uh, side or front view here we could just move our geometry up so that it rests perfectly on the x-axis uh, like that and it's super important that you do this properly um, because of a step we'll do in just a moment okay once you've uh, got it lined up properly we need to freeze transformations and this is going to help us force the model to remain in position during the next step so if we freeze transformations you won't see anything change um, but you'll need it and now we can do reset transformations and this will snap the pivot to the middle of the grid wherever that is this doesn't send it to the base of your object it sends it to the middle of the grid which because we've lined up our object perfectly is also the base of the object um, and it's usually best to have your pivot down at the bottom of the objects for when you're dressing a scene or something um, same for game environments as it helps you to snap to terrain and things like that as well. Next, let's go to the outliner to double check that everything's named properly. So we'll just go to a window, outliner, and as I can see, it's just called group at the moment. Now, just to be safe, I'll just call this uh, old bike. And there's one more thing that we have to do. We just have to make sure the FBX plugin is already set up in Maya. So if we go to window, settings and preferences, and then go to Plugin Manager. Uh, we just need to double check that the FBX Maya plugin is loaded. So scroll down until you find fbxmaya.mll and make sure you check loaded and auto loaded. And now if you go to File and with your object or group selected, click on Export Selection. Um, I always avoid clicking export to all because they never know if there's some um, light that's hiding in the distance and um, it's going to throw everything off so just select what you know you want to export and then go to export selection uh, we can click directly on the text or if you can click on the little box next to it and we get the export selection options pop up just make sure we choose uh, FBX export, which should be near the bottom of that drop down list. Um, at first, if you do play around in here, you might notice that lots of stuff is greyed out. You might be thinking, why can't I uh, include uh, texture information? Don't worry, we'll do that in a moment. So just all we have to change in here is FBX export and then go to export selection. Also feel free to set up your own preset for your exporting as well, but we can customize this in the next step. So click export selection. And this will take us to the window here where we can choose where to put it. So um, just go to your projects, um, whatever project you want to do. I'll just do default for now. I usually export single objects to my assets folder. And so I can have a nice library in my assets folder of what I want to include in this scene. And then uh, over here on the right, we can just check some options here. So the first thing that we need to check is that we have the embed media option. If you go over to file type specific options and then down to the include 
uh, option down here. We can drop down, it's got geometry, animation, we can tell it whether or not to include animations, which, which can be useful. If, you've got, if we're doing this to a whole scene, it can be useful to include lights and cameras, or to force it not to include those if, uh, if you want. But if you're just doing simple objects, the most important thing you need to make sure is checked is embed media. And this is referring to the textures, uh, which will make sure that we export all the textures into the single file. No extra folders will be created next to this, so it keeps it nice and neat. The final thing is to use a uh, Maya ASCII uh, file format. Uh, ASCII files are slower uh, to open in Maya than the binary ones, and they're also slightly larger, but they are usually backwards compatible. And if there's any problems further down the line, you can actually open up the ASCII file in a notepad or text editor and change things that might not be working for a certain user. So ASCII file, then we can name it. So I'm just gonna name it like old. Double check, we've got FBX export there, obviously, and then we can go to export selection. Now, if we go to a new scene, or if you really want to make sure it's working, you can even open up Mayo on a totally different computer. Okay, now that we've exported the model, uh, we can see that we should just have one file there, an FBX file. And if you hover over it, you should see the file size is pretty big. This one's 10 megabytes, and it's probably because it includes seven textures. So if I just check my hypershader um, for the file that I created the bike in, I can see it's actually got seven textures here and they're, they are all bundled into that simple FBX file. If we go into a new, brand new Maya scene, uh, even if it's on a different computer without these textures on it at all, we just go to File and go to Import and navigate to wherever this is. I would highly recommend moving the FBX file to your Assets folder that should be in the directory that you created. Even if it's not in there, it will still work, but if you just load it up and press Import, you might have to press 6 on your keyboard to show a shaded view, and you can see that everything's working there. Now, as soon as you import your geometry and view the textures, you can see uh, there's a folder created now next to the FBX file. And this does contain all the textures for Maya to source from. So um, this will appear uh, to any FBX file that has been imported into a master scene. So this process is very popular if you're using stock assets that have been created further back in the production pipeline to quickly dress environments. The only drawback to this method is if several exported object files share the same texture, that texture will also be duplicated within the file for each export. So for example, if I have a look at this scene here, I've got this really old fridge and it shares the same texture as the frame for this bike. So if I locate the texture in the hypershader and just go to edit, select uh, objects with materials, we can see here I've got two different objects with the same material applied. This is quite an efficient way to keep file sizes low. If I was to export this fridge separately and this bike separately, all of their textures would be separately bundled into their own FBX files. And this is perfectly acceptable for unique assets, especially if you've um, carefully crafted uh, textures into the geometries UV maps in Photoshop or on Mudbox. But in situations where project file size is a, a big concern, it would probably be best to exclude the textures from the export and make sure they're uh, linked to a common texture within the project directory. But if you're looking for a really quick way to export or move or unique assets between computers, uh, then this is a great way of doing it. And even if the directory changes, your models will still retain their textures.